12-year-old Jessie likes challenging her mother at Scrabble, but many times just finishing the game can be a challenge. That's because Jessie suffers from persistent pain. It won't be horrible every day, but every day I'll have just a little bit of stomach pain. The stomach pain began six years ago when Jessie was just a little girl. And all of a sudden she grabbed her stomach and started screaming from pain. And it's really sharp. Like I have a knife almost in there and I just feel, and if I move a certain way, it hurts more than I would if I were in a different position. The severity of the pain was so intense that we actually thought that it was appendicitis and took her out to the ER. Jesse didn't have appendicitis and the abdominal pain didn't go away. Over the next six years, Jesse and her mother looked into every possible cause. Blood tests and x-rays were normal. Meanwhile, Jesse was also suffering from migraine headaches and joint pain and showed signs of anxiety and possibly depression. Doctors prescribed medicine for the stomach pain, for the migraines, even for acid reflux, but nothing seemed to take care of the underlying problem. You know, you try to be like strong, you try to get them to work through it, um, but your heart's breaking at the same time and you just wanna take the pain away for, for them. And it really does hurt and these kids really do suffer. Their parents often suffer. The parents are often terribly worried that something very serious may be wrong. The parents are very troubled because they see how the symptom can interfere with the child's life. Dr. John Campo is chief of child and adolescent psychiatry and a pediatrician at Nationwide Children's Hospital. He's seen hundreds of cases like Jesse's and says she actually suffers from a condition known as functional abdominal pain. Although often misdiagnosed, functional abdominal pain is estimated to affect as many as 9% of children. By functional abdominal pain, what we essentially mean is abdominal pain that is medically unexplained in the traditional sense. What do I mean by that? It's pain that is not associated with evidence of a clear-cut physical disease. Functional abdominal pain affects both boys and girls, although it tends to be more common among girls, especially after puberty. It often develops during two peak times in a child's development, between four and six years old, or later in life during late childhood or early adolescence. Although the cause of the pain isn't clear, the pain itself is quite real, and the consequences can be overwhelming for kids and their families. We know that as a group, these kids miss more school than unaffected kids. They don't do as well in school as unaffected kids. There are many kids with recurrent abdominal pain who are actually quite good students, but if you compare them to kids without it as a group, they don't do as well. It's affected her schoolwork a lot because the pain is enough that, I mean, she's had to like lay in bed and not be able to get out of bed because it hurts so bad. We have gym now, we're in the middle of playing basketball. And I usually have to sit down or lay down for a minute. We do one drill, we dribble the ball from one side of the court to the other and then back and I'm so tired just after that. And my stomach hurts and just too much almost. Sometimes they get worse. Is there one kind of stomach ache or are there a couple different kinds? Since the pain these kids feel is not the result of tissue damage or inflammation, doctors have looked for other explanations for why some kids experience the pain and others don't. There is a lot of evidence now that makes us think that those of us who suffer from this kind of abdominal pain may be vulnerable to sensations in our gut. There is reason to believe that people with functional abdominal pain may have more sensitive gastrointestinal systems and possibly brains that are more sensitive when it comes to receiving and interpreting signals of discomfort sent from the gut. That likely has to do, at least in part, with a substance called serotonin, which is commonly talked about as a brain chemical associated with depression. But Dr. Campo says serotonin is also found elsewhere in the body. People have thought about serotonin very much as a neurotransmitter in the brain, okay? We think about it as being important in anxiety and in depression. 
and that's all quite true. But what's really interesting is that 95% of our body's serotonin is in our, in our gut, in our intestinal tract. When the cells lining the intestinal tract release serotonin, that sends a signal to both the brain and the local nervous system in the stomach, indicating something isn't right. The result? Pain. Past infections or trauma, such as salmonella poisoning or milk allergies, may also sensitize the intestinal tract, making kids more likely to experience pain. Tell me about your headaches. Researchers have also found a link between functional abdominal pain and depression, anxiety, migraine headaches, and fatigue. I think it would be simplistic to say that the pain in these kids is caused by anxiety or depression, or that the anxiety or depression that we see in these kids is caused by the pain. I don't think we know enough to say either of those things. Here's what we do know. What we know is that most kids who come in to see the doctor with abdominal pain that is unexplained. Don't just have abdominal pain. About two thirds of them have headaches. About one third of them actually meet criteria for migraine headaches. Many of them have chest pain. Many of them complain of dizziness. Many of them complain of fatigue. What they also have is a tendency to be more likely to have problems with worry and with low mood. There's no quick fix when it comes to functional abdominal pain. However, two types of treatment have shown promise. The first is a rehabilitative approach to the pain called cognitive behavioral therapy. By helping children and adolescents understand that the pain is real but not harmful, they can then learn techniques to help manage the pain. Coping techniques include relaxation training and biofeedback, guided imagery, and self-hypnosis, to name a few. The focus becomes on how do I cope with having this problem that I know is not going to shorten my life, that I know is not associated with tissue damage. That hurts, but how do I manage and do my best with the pain? Interestingly, that sort of approach can be helpful in distracting people from the pain. And truly, if you can get people to take that approach, there's some evidence that it actually, the pain will uh, uh, decrease over time. The second treatment that has shown promise involves the use of medications that have traditionally been used as antidepressants. These medications, known as serotonin reuptake inhibitors, affect the handling of serotonin in the brain and the intestinal tract. Since serotonin transmits messages of pain, changing how our body handles serotonin may help ease functional abdominal pain. Although serotonin reuptake inhibitors haven't been FDA approved for the treatment of functional abdominal pain, Dr. Campo and gastroenterologists at Nationwide Children's are conducting studies of the medication, in particular one called citalopram. In the meantime, doctors agree it's important to keep in mind that there is help for functional abdominal pain. The good news is this is an extremely common disorder that we have growing experience with and the vast majority of these kids can be helped or in some way will get better over time. And that's welcome news for kids like Jesse and their families because easing the pain also helps ease the worry. I feel like it's a stepping stone. I'm not concerned about fixing the problem as, as much as managing it. If, if they find a cure that's great but Knowing what is wrong and being able to say that, a lot of times, once you can pinpoint what the problem is, you can work on that area, whether it's through medication or therapy or even just mentally. It's kind of cool thinking now we know what it is so we can make it better. Scientifically proven treatments are still not available to children and young people suffering from functional abdominal pain, but clinicians and researchers are working hard to find ways to help. If you or anyone you know has a child who is suffering from functional abdominal pain and would like to learn more about our efforts here at Nationwide Children's Hospital, please contact us.